This episode of the Infamous Podcast is brought to you by the Flying Pork Apparel Company. The Flying Pork Apparel Company is an awfully long name to fit into a 15-second ad. We're most likely going to have to cut it short, but our design of tees and customer services are like way long on quality. Visit flyingporkapparel.com and shirt yourself, folks. Thank you. Hey, welcome back to the Infos Podcast. This is Brian checking in with a special bonus episode about WrestleMania 36. And today I am joined by the best friend of the show. Aw. Aw. Introduce yourself, sir. <laughs> I am Julian Brown from the Everything is Permitted Podcast. And thanks for having me back, man. Dude, always. Um, you're like my best podcast friend now. Like... <laughs> It's besties. Like besties. I, I message you more than my wife. <laughs> oh wow. That that is an honor. I think we need to start coming out to the iconics entrance music or something oh, like that. Oh, there we go. Can can we yell iconics like that? I'm not sure my voice can handle that. <laughs> Three, two, one. Iconic. <laughs> I can't do the Australian accent, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. So um WrestleMania has come and gone. Um, and could you say it really didn't come at all? Uh, um, after what they they gave us, uh, I mean, yeah, that wasn't WrestleMania. Yeah, we had two nights of of pseudo wrestling. Um, some of it was good, most of it wasn't. Um, did you have just? I, I want to start on a positive note. Did you have like any like particular like not a whole match or anything, just like a highlight of of like some in ring action? Uh yeah, absolutely. I uh, I think we talked about this on chat. Uh, I thought the most on of both nights, the most energy and the biggest feeling that I got and like the most excitement I got was actually the Raw tag team match. I know that sounds completely bonkers, but. The fact that Zelina Vega, you know, did her thing and interfered in the match and, you know, kicks him in the face and all of a sudden Bianca Belair's music hits. Now, I love Bianca Belair. I love her in NXT. Same. I love what she did. I love what she did in the Royal Rumble. And to hear her come out and then just, you know, beat the crap out of Zelina Vega and just be like, I'm here. These are my boys. Don't mess with me. Mm-hmm. Like, I, it was just, it was really cool seeing her. And even with an empty crowd, like she spoke to me. Yeah. And that was very rare for these past two nights of WrestleMania. And then I just have to say, you know, going into the next night on Raw, it was the same exact thing, right? Yeah. Like just being like, I used to be the EST of NXT. I don't go there anymore. I go here now. And then just like kicking the crap out of Zelina Vega again. Like when I she her. looked at Zelina Vega and did the clap thing. And I go here now. I, I like popped my tits off. Um, that clap that she does is just so like, I'm the boss. Don't mess with me. Like I, I love everything about her. So when she first hit NXT, I hated her. She just like, I didn't feel like she could wrestle. She was sloppy. She couldn't really talk yet. And um, yeah, and like you know, in the same message when we were talking about this, like I feel like she she followed like that Miz school of of like I'm gonna work hard, I'm gonna learn how to talk, I'm gonna learn how to you know really hone this craft, and like within six months she's like one of my top three favorite women on NXT. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just uh, she. You're right though. She did not know how to talk at the beginning, and the it was all about the ponytail. The spinning exactly. ponytail, and that was exactly. it. It was like that gimmick was so dumb, and they've turned it into something actually cool. Yeah, and and pairing her with the Street Profits and her husband, Montez oh, yeah. Ford, like, good move. Good so, move. Um, Like, the Street Profits are great. I, I Like, I love them in NXT. When they got pulled up kind of prematurely to, to WWE, I was really concerned. And it looks like Paul, uh, Paul Heyman, is letting them kind of do their thing, which is great. Yeah. But uh but yeah, no, so yeah, that was cool. I, I think of like just kind of a little like snapshot of the two nights was during the uh the SmackDowns women title match when it was Sasha and Bailey and Naomi in the ring. 
Um, this was before they had ta- um, gotten rid of Tamina and Lacey Evans was knocked out outside the ring. And just the way the three of them went at it, it, it really shows like on that women's roster, as far as like work rate wrestling goes, they are the top three. Yeah, um, I would agree with that. Yeah, for sure. And it was just like this fun little like, I guess, four minutes maybe that it was just the the three of them in the ring. And then, you know, Tamina came back in and they all kind of went and did um kind of the unicorn stampede on her. Um, so to speak with pseudo finishers and, and got her out. And, you know, that was, that was like a cool moment in the match um, that Tamina probably didn't need to be in. I hate um, everything about her, her, everything. I, you know, who else I really dislike is Lacey Evans. Me too. Yeah. Um, she, she's another one who just, you know, why Vince brought her up. Um, she's, she's very one note. Uh, like I love what they've been doing with um. I always call Bailey Pam now because I learned her real name was Pam. <laughs> she and is like, Pam, right? And like, it's like is she really Bailey anymore, right? And it's like I, I kind of love Pam, like this version of Bailey, <laughs> um, and the the shit talking and, and all of that. And um, Sasha Banks is my favorite female wrestler of all time. So you and I have like very like. I don't know, uh, inter- intersecting or yeah. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. We have very similar opinions about the women's division, I think, because I love Sasha. Yeah, I, I, I love her. She she and my daughter loved Sasha as well. Oh, like, well, you had the pictures part. from from WrestleMania last year um, yeah. with with your daughter meeting um, Bailey and, and, and Sasha with the, when they were the Boston Hug Connection before yep. all that nonsense happened. But um, all right. So we're going to run through the show, I think. I think we just start with night one, the pre-show match. We had Cesaro beating Drew Gulak. Um, it was an okay match. I-, I thought it was cool to see Cesaro pull out his old move set. Yeah. Um, but again, there was no crowd to be like, "Holy crap, Cesaro is doing stuff we haven't seen him do in five years." You know. The thing with Cesaro and Drew Gulak, right, is like Gulak's had the- had those great matches with Daniel Bryan, right? And then if you if you look like a few months back uh, on Raw and the whole series between Cesaro and Ricochet and how good those three matches were, like, this was going to be a good match no matter what. And the fact that you didn't have a crowd to react to it, like, it just makes it another kind of, uh, I saw this term used the other night, like, generic performance center match. And I don't mean performance center in the sense that the pay-per-view is taking place there. It's like, this is a match you would put on to impress your coaches, you know? Yeah. Or at least that's what it looks like without a crowd. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, yeah, I, I think the thing that you mentioned there is is the the common denominator is Brian, is, you know, Daniel Bryan. Um, he can wrestle anywhere and make it look good. Crowd, no crowd, in a ring, in a dumpster, you know, uh, I, I'm hopefully someday we're going to see him wrestle on a cruise ship at a Jericho rock and rager at sea. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, that guy just has it and his particular move set does not rely on, you know, fan interaction to, to get things pumped up. No, that's true. I would agree with that. So, um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, it was, I was bored with it. I, uh, you know, the, the show hadn't quite started yet. So I was, not even really like super into the idea of like sitting around for what only turned out to be three and a half hours um, of, of WrestleMania. But you know, I think it's a two out of five star match. Yeah, I would give it, I would give it a two and a half, three for sure. Um, you know, I think with, with the crowd, you, we may have been saying something entirely different. You just I, don't I think you're right. right? I, I think with a crowd, this is a solid, like three star match with no issues. Yeah. So I think, I think we'll, we'll, we'll call that a two and a half out of five to split the difference between the two of us. All right. So then the show starts, um, and we get the Kabuki warriors versus Alexa bliss and Nissi, Nikki cross, um, Alexa bliss being an Ohio girl. So I'm, I'm, I'm all in on her as well. Um, you got to be an option, right? You got to rep the Ohio Mafia. Um, do you know about the Ohio Mafia? I do not. Okay, so like, no matter where you work or like what kind of organization you in, you're in, there's somebody from Ohio that works with you. That's like, good to know. Like, we just leave and like 
go out like I I, I, I learned I, I didn't learn about the, the whole Ohio Mafia thing until I went to work in New York City and they're like oh yeah there's someone from Ohio at every company in New York City and you guys are like your own little mafia and control everything it was really funny um, <laughs> but this was a this was a good match because of Asuka and Kairi Sane speaking Japanese right <laughs> shit talking <laughs> <laughs> Alexa and Nikki Cross the whole time. I mean, they also just should not be ever, like allowed to speak English ever again because the way that they do speak Japanese is just so damn intimidating and right? also like makes them fun. And you know, it, and what was funny about that was they were yelling at them in Japanese, and then Alexa Bliss, like when she started kicking the crap out of Asuka, was like talking trash to her in English, and it was right. like this great back and forth that actually worked. And almost took the place of fans, if that makes sense. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I I liked the match. I I have a huge problem with the finish, especially mm. because it was pre-recorded. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about that, Nora, or talk about the match a little bit more. But um, no, I, I think I think the match went really well. I, I I agree with the the finish was was not what I wanted to see. Um, one the outcome and two the botch. Um, I, th- I don't know. I, I think with the crowd, this, this match may have been a little bit sloppier too. That's a good point. Yeah. So, um, I don't have a problem with the result. Uh, I, I, I like having the titles off of Oscar and Kyrie just because it really looks like even before, you know, COVID-19 and coronavirus that they were pushing Oscar for a singles run again and kind of becoming that dominant Oscar that we yeah. all want to see. That we so, desperately want. Yes. I, I'm not I'm not disappointed with the result, but man, you're this was pre recorded, right? Mm-hmm. Like redo the twisted bliss. Right. Like just cut and redo it. Cause she straight up landed on her legs. Right. Just flat and out. It was ugly. It like was she was like awful. she was a uh, Afghan just falling from the sky. <laughs> yeah. Um I, I will say Kyrie Sane's contract is coming up soon and it doesn't look like she's going to resign and I can't really blame her um, but I, I would like to see them split the two of them up so we can get um, our Sky Sky Pirate version of Kyrie Sane back uh, Yeah, I think it was a huge miss that they had a pirate themed Wrestlemania and they changed her gimmick right before that do you think though do you think though had they still had the pay-per-view at Raymond James Stadium that they would have had them come out of the the pirate ship cuz I think they would have. Well, I think everybody would have come out of the pirate ship though. Okay, fair I, enough. I don't think just the two of them. Um but yeah, I don't know. I like I I, I gave I I gave this one a 3 out of 5 um even with the botched finish because I I thought the <laughs> the infectious Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Enthusiasm that Nikki Cross yeah. brings to everything that she does in a ring, um, in and around, I-, I think makes up again for like lack of crowd. And then when she yeah. talks to the empty arena, like there's a crowd there, like <laughs> I just find that very fun and like it's it's well within her character and it's it's the character she's had since she was with Sanity and um, I got that right. Wasn't that with uh, when she was with those dudes? Who are all yeah, the, uh, the, Eric Young and they um, had a really Wolf stupid and, uh, yeah. sanity. Yeah. yeah, sanity. That's what they were called. Um, yeah. But yeah, like you know, it, it's very much within her character. But now she's like taking focus that on being Alexa Bliss's best friend. Um, you know, I don't mind it though. I I think that somehow these two work. They do. It's it's, it's strange, but it definitely works. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be less nice. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm gonna judge this match because. If it wasn't pre-recorded, fine, I get it. There's going to be botches. You move on, whatever. Right. End of story, done. But if you're pre-recording a show, don't let botches happen. Sure. It's, it's that simple. So yeah. I got to give it a two. Okay, so we'll we'll call this one a two and a half. Split into difference as well. Yeah, that sounds good. So, all right. Uh, so moving on, we had the match I was least looking forward to of any match probably in the history of WrestleMania, <laughs> and that includes when Snooki did a tag team match. Forgot about that. Yeah, remember. Why did you have to bring that up? Because she did that sick cross body off the second turnbuckle that, like, 
you didn't see that coming and like True. little bowling ball shaped snooky coming off the robe at you has got to be terrifying um <laughs> you know but no so we had elias versus queen corbin um and i i hate what they've done to baron corbin hmm. I, I i like i hated the constable gimmick i hate the king gimmick i liked that lone wolf like you know what he was in NXT as just a, a a stone cold serial killer, and now he's just a clown. Um, I in my disagree. opinion, it's in my opinion. Yeah, so. hey, opinion. Hey, yep. opinions are good. I uh, I think that we've had way too many lone wolves in WWE. So I was I was happy for them to kind of move away from that, and especially I think he was still using that kind of gimmick when he won Money in the Bank and then yeah. didn't win the championship, right? Um, and I don't think that that gimmick would have worked as, with him as a champion anyway. Like, dude, it, it, him as King Corbin, and yeah, the constable thing was kind of a wreck, but King Corbin and this obnoxious asshole that he plays on TV right now is, he is, I think, one of the best heels in the business right now because of that. Because he's basically, and he said it in interviews, he's basically being, you know, a more douchey version of himself. Well, and, and um, that's the thing. It's like... um I remember him from like college and, and the NFL, um, what little time he was there. And yeah, he's a total douche. His teammates always like disliked him. And, you know, I, I think you can keep that character without, I, I think the main problem is how much we see of him. They, they right. go to him a lot. There's, there's, there's Corbin overload and maybe that's what it is. And, and with him, a less is more approach is probably a little better. You know, I wonder if they didn't use him as much as if people would do what's very popular now and all of a sudden start liking him yeah. for whatever reason. And then all of a sudden you're out another great heel because he is a great heel. He's a great heel. I'm, I'm not arguing that. I just I, I think I, I think we see him too much on television and, and too much in multiples, multiple times throughout a raw episode too many times well and the seth rollins thing went on too long the oh, Roman Reigns thing yeah. was coming very dangerously close to going on too long uh i yeah i i mostly agree with you i just i do like the character sure. i guess is what i'm gonna say um but elias beat him so you know again like elias is one of those like i didn't like him as the drifter elias whatever his last name was before they took that away from him samson um thank you on nxt <laughs> um i i, I like it when he comes out and does the songs and gets interrupted, but then I don't like to watch him wrestle. Cause again, I don't think he can. Um, yeah, I couldn't tell you what his finishing move is. It's I think one of those swing and net breaker yeah. type things, you know, so, I don't know. There, it, it's funny. There's so many moves that you see people do. Like, uh, you see people do like the, the Rick rude neck breaker. That was his <laughs> finisher. And it's like, all right, so they did a move. They should not kick out of that. That is a solid finisher. Um, you know, the DDT was the most dangerous move in wrestling for years, and right. now they just do it. Um, you know, uh, I think the the fact that the stunner is so protected is is amazing. Um, even now with KO, and and yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's just interesting. Like, I don't know. I don't like anything about Elias other than like the comedy act of Elias. I think. Elias is completely useless other than getting speared at SummerSlam in 2019 well, by yeah, Edge. That you know that that got us that amazing 24 documentary that exactly. uh, that it may or may not have been dusty in the house when I was watching that. There were definitely some onion ninjas around, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um I'm giving this one a one out of five, um, only because I'm not gonna give anything a zero because these guys all showed up and worked. Are we not allowed to give things a zero? Is that <laughs> I, I, I think because of the threat of uh corona right. and COVID nineteen, um no, we're not allowed to give them a zero. Okay, that's fair. I'll give it a one. Okay, one out of five. Cool. We're 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 on the same page. <laughs> um Okay. So the next match, uh I was shocked this match happened so early in the show. Was same. was uh Becky Lynch bleh, bleh, Becky Lynch. I don't know who Becky Lynch is. Uh, Becky Lynch defeating Shayna Baszler uh, in the Raw Women's Championship match. Uh, the fact that the WWE writing is so lazy that they had her beat Shayna the way um, Kyrie Sane beat her twice in NXT and Shayna hasn't learned from that yet was infuriating. 
Oh, so here, here's the thing, right? You, you can't have Shayna win at an empty arena, right? Absolutely. Like, I just, this, I think the move was purely done to protect her. Yeah. And I agree with it. But yeah, I agree with you. The, that kind of pin, like, that should not have been the finish. Should Shayna have tapped to, to, the, uh, to the disarmor? No. You cannot have Shayna tap. So like, here, no here's the around. ideal finish because Becky today, um, when we're recording this on the 7th, uh, is the 365th day that she's held that title. A DQ in this case where she is so desperate to keep that belt, one, keeps her you know, going. She's still the man because she's going to do anything like that whole Ric Flair. And like she's got a little Eddie Guerrero in there that lie, cheat, and steal. Um, that I think goes over with the non crowd show. Yeah, I think the only way to have that work would be to do a non crowd show because my worry with that is, is all of a sudden you're in this big Raymond James Stadium, and even if even if they had Becky winning with a full crowd, having her do it be a DQ in front of a full crowd all of a sudden creates an issue because oh, right, you don't I, want I her to be people, a heel. No, and I think people are already kinding, kind of like starting to, you know, she's so bad, she's good kind of heal right. Shayna Baszler, and you don't want that story flipping because Becky still, in my opinion, is the hottest thing, at least in WWE right mm-hmm. now. I just uh, feel like that- what they did with Shayna at the Elimination Chamber, the way she just kind of tore through the rest of that women's division, Um, where do you go from here with her? Obviously, she's still in that hunt, but like, you know, Nia Jax came back on Raw. Um do you have her and Shayna facing off? Do you have Becky kind of forget about Shayna for a minute and like go deal with the past? Um, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of things that happened after that match that makes me really worried for Shayna Baszler. I, I hope that this is a one and done, right? Like the, the sole reason for this is protecting her, making sure she doesn't win in front of an empty crowd. And that the minute, that we're allowed to go to arenas again, there's something set up between Becky and Shane again. Or even, listen, I would love to see Asuka have a run with the title and yeah. even let Shayna go through this roster again for a whole entire year and then have Asuka Baszler at WrestleMania because how amazing would that match? Oh, that would be fantastic because um, if you remember when Shayna showed up in NXT, Asuka moved up to WWE exactly. and, and vacated the title. Asuka never lost a match in NXT. Yep. Um, which is really impressive. And, you know, she had a, a, a solid run in WWE until she hit the uh the the Flair family hype train. But um yeah, I don't know. I I think as far as like the match goes, this was a really well planned out match. I think it showed how savage Shayna is when she's, you know, swinging Becky up against the announcer's table. Um, I think it showed the scrappiness of Becky, the way she was able to come back. I loved when Shayna put Becky in the disarmor. I thought that was a like a great, like, you know, they planned this ahead, but like perceived middle finger to, to Becky. Like, oh, yeah, look, here moves nothing. I can do it, too. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I was just... I hate I hate seeing them build characters up the way they did with Shayna at Elimination Chamber, only to show up at Mania and and kind of have a squirrelyish finish. Yeah, like a squirrelyish finish that's like a roll up, essentially, not like a Schmoz finish where Becky hit her with a chair, which I think would have been a great thing. Like Shayna's just beating her, beating her, beating her, and then she throws her outside the ring, and Becky's like, "Well, shit, I can't do anything against this one." Bam! Chair shot over yeah. the head. Title still mine. I'm still the man. You know. <laughs> you yeah, I would have dug that. Back down to the bottom that. of the list for you, and come at me again in six months when you've you know earned your shot. Um, I was I was at Mania last year, and I saw the finish between Ronda and yeah. Charlotte, yeah. and remember it was it was very confusing because it was again it was just a roll up and mm-hmm. the whole controversy about Ronda's right. shoulder not being on the on the mat. Oh, it was nowhere near uh, the mat. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm like it was still great to see her win, right? Like right. that was such an awesome WrestleMania moment. And I'm wondering if for some weird ass reason, if they were trying to replicate that moment and have it be like, look at Becky getting these scrappy ass pins two years in a row. 
yeah. at WrestleMania. I mean, I'll say that the writing staff is not creative enough to really come up with new things. So I could imagine they're like, hey, let's just control Z, control V uh, in this into the, <laughs> into the rundown. Um, I, I will say, um, you know, three out of five for this match. I, I, I think it was it was fine. It was it was at a weird spot in the card. So I think that affected it a little bit for me. I think that this match should have been uh, either a runner up to the main event or maybe like, you know, third match before the main event. Uh, somewhere a lot higher, having said that, this match was everything that Charlotte and um, and uh, Ray Ripley should yeah. have been. Yep. Uh, and I give it a three and a half. I thought this match was fantastic. Right. You know what? I'm going to go three and a half with you on that one. Right. Um, I, I will say I think they should have switched the Blue Universal title match for this one with uh, Strowman and and Oldberg should have been Agreed. in this spot. But uh but yeah, so three and a half. All right. Cool. Um okay, so two of my favorite wrestlers wrestle <laughs> in this next one. <laughs> um we had Intercontinental Champion Samuel what? G- Samuel G. Zane um against well with Cesaro and, and Shinsuke out there, which was great to actually see people out there. Um Defeating Daniel Bryan, who had Drew Gulak out there with him. Um, this was a pretty decent match. Um, you have two guys who are used, who came up wrestling in rooms with, you know, less people than were in their entourage at ring signs. So they know how to, they know how to put on a show. Yeah. Sammy being intercontinental champion one, you know, I don't know how many times it's been said at this point is way overdue. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the whole Fidel Castro thing he's got going on right <laughs> I now. Love it. I is, love it so much. You're genius. The Having great liberator. That, yeah. The great <laughs> liberator. Having said that Jesus Christ, get Shinsuke away from both of them. Give me back my Shinsuke. That's you don't all like, you don't like the artist collective. I hate the artist collective. I need Shinsuke to win a championship. I need him to come out to the good music. I love both of his songs, but I need Shinsuke to do something before he turns. I don't know. He's like in his forties at this point, I think, uh, give me Shinsuke now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, the match itself. Fantastic. Uh, having Shinsuke and Cesaro and Gulak in the quote unquote crowd or, you know, at ringside yeah. uh, added that layer it needed. There was mm-hmm. some excitement. There were things going on instead of just straight up wrestling. Sammy being the ultimate heel and kept on leaving the ring. Uh, you know, God, imagine if there was a crowd, how much booing there would be. Oh, absolutely. Do you remember? I mean, this was like, you know, edge 15 years ago. When when he was uh, first becoming the ultimate opportunist and winning Money in the Bank matches and kind of like eking out championships uh, yeah. in the most underhanded way, like I kind of like get reminiscent of that with the way Sammy is is, is playing things right now. Um, a little bit of that that first time with uh, J and J security with um, with Seth Rollins, but much less like frustrating. Um, because he will get in there and mix it up. Yeah, for sure. So one hundred percent. Um, I gave this one a four out of five. Um, one because I really like these these these. I like everybody around the ring in in this particular match, and I thought they they did a, a really good job. And you know, Brian has a path that he's going to take here in in kind of like what's most likely winding down his full time career with WWE and I'm really interested to see how they grow that and where they go with it and who they're going to add to that particular stable. Um, Mm -hmm. I will say, I don't think WWE new day excluded does trios very well. Um, It's not like our friends. It's not like our friends at AEW who really kind of have grasped the concept of the trio and, and run with it. What's that trio right now of uh, Pac and, uh, and, uh, Lucha House, not Lucha House, Jesus, not Lucha House Party, uh, Lucha Bros. Yeah. What are they called? Uh, oh, uh, is it the Lucha Bastards or something? I don't, it's something. Yeah. It's something so, cool. It is. But, yeah. but like, you know, um, you have Jurassic Express. You've got, you know, the the whole the whole thing. I, I, I think, you know, they, I think WWE does great with like four, with a stable mm-hmm. where they're not um, all kind of like Freebird rules. Um, 
you know, the, the, as much as I, I hate Seth Rollins, the whole AOP and, and Buddy Murphy thing kind of works for me. Uh, yeah, it was better than anything he had done during his face run as Universal Champion. Yeah, like I, I didn't even like the Shield. You know, yeah. like I looked at the Shield and I only liked Dean Ambrose, John Moxley. Um, I, I thought I always thought Rollins was the weak link of that group. Uh, I always thought Roman was protected and and you know couldn't really go with the the rest of the division at the time. So I don't know. Um. Let me uh, let me get yeah. let me score this match real quick because there's one yeah, more yeah, thing yeah. I want to. Oh sure, my bad. Um, oh no, no, yeah, no did we okay. score? yeah, I said four. Yeah, four. Out you of five. did. Yeah. I I didn't. I was gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a three and a half. It was it was fine. It was fun. Like I said, having them around three and a half. Okay. Um, the one, the one other thing I want to say about about Seth Rollins is that I think he is gonna end up taking this Triple H route where he yeah. ends yeah. up being ten times the heel that he is a baby face. Yeah. He is so damn good. As a heel. Okay, so let's uh, save that for a second and talk about the. Oh, because that match is. Yeah, that's that, well, that's. Yeah. We have one more match and then we'll get to that one. So we've yep, got the, the the tag team champion triple threat <laughs> ladder match, <laughs> where tag team champions John Morrison defeated Jimmy <laughs> Uso and Kofi Kingston, um, in a ladder match for the SmackDown tag team titles. Uh one, you could not have picked three crazier individuals to put into a crowd free ladder match. Um like I think in history, like I, I think, you know, you, you go back Maybe Jeff Hardy. Sorry? Maybe Jeff Hardy. Yeah, you know though, I think Hardy needs a crowd. I, I don't think Hardy yeah. works without a crowd. Um his his antics are you know, he does a lot of that posturing and the the hopping up on the uh the second turnbuckle and doing the little bow, like I'm king of the world on the edge of the Titanic thing constantly um, to play to the crowd. I, I I think these three again are, are all pretty seasoned guys from not just, I mean, I know they've all been in WWE for a long time, but I mean, Morrison was wrestling like in Lucha underground and impact to, you know, 500 to 1500 people. So, yeah. You know, like he gets it. The Usos, they kind of get it. I, I think um, they're I don't like the Usos. Sorry, at all. I don't like the Usos. I don't like the Usos either. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of this rock tree of talent that they have with them and Naya, and heaven knows what they're going to do with his his daughter. Um, but I love Kofi. I've always loved Co- Kofi. Oh, yeah. I miss Air Boom. All the time with him and Evan Bourne. <laughs> that tag team, oh man! <laughs> so if Evan Bourne just kind of stayed away from the hippie lettuce, like you know, they were in a little go bit places. too much of the hippie lettuce. Yeah. I think he was into some harder shit too. I don't know, but um, <laughs> this was a fun match. It was a short match for 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 a triple threat, and then the way it ended was like just kind of fun and confusing and like. It, it was. It didn't end like a normal ladder match where like the person gets punched off the ladder and someone takes the belt. The guy who got punched off the ladder took the belts with him, and the only reason this works is because of those belts are Velcro now. <laughs> They're not <laughs> snapped. Like, like you know, there's no way you could have unsnapped like all eight of those buttons uh, to to do what he did. But you can definitely pull that Velcro right off. Yeah. So. Um. I could not get over when he falls onto that ladder with the belts, right? And Kofi and whichever Uso is it Jay or Jimmy? In Jimmy, the Jimmy. So, uh, Jay, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, and Kofi are looking at each other, and they're just like, "Come on!" And I think Kofi literally just looks at him, and not like I'm going to punch you in the face, right. but just like, "Come on, man! Like, really, <laughs> we just let that happen? What did we just let happen?" <laughs> he, yeah. he looked at me. He's like, "Biggie wouldn't have let that happen." <laughs> and then he, he, he did the even better move and looked down at the ring that was holding the belts like what <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't I know loved it. i mean it, it was fun like it, it was a, it was a it was a fun little match i don't know what do you rate this one um i'm gonna give it a uh a four i'm gonna give this match a four simply because of john morrison's bump that he took that yeah. from the the not the not the top rope but right above the top rope onto jimmy uso mm-hmm. the, his corkscrew oh, like yeah with not that much room to land it and he hit all of it yeah uh, and looked good he didn't need a second take alexa bliss 
Ah, uh, damn right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Four out of five for sure. Um so, all right. So let's let's get back to to Seth Rollins here, Mister Monday Night Messiah. So, um, I I really like his look right now with the the you know the Bane the all black Bane leather jacket that they tried to put on John Moxley, uh, or put on Dean Ambrose. Um, I, I like the man bun and his super dark beard and hair right now. Um. You know he's done the heel thing where he's let his ha- his chest hair grow out a little bit, <laughs> um, so you know he he's a little less defined in in like the ab region and everything. So I, I like I dig this character as much as I don't care for Seth as a wrestler, um, a a a, a person on Twitter. Um, I, I'm digging what they're doing with him right now. That being said. Kevin Owens is a goddamn madman. He is a mix of like Mick Foley, um, Bret Hart. I don't know, like four other like Edge. You know, like stone all cold. he's got Stone Cold. Yeah, Stone him, Cold for sure. Yeah, like he's like those four guys in um um what's his name um Big Country Roy uh the UFC guy uh, Roy uh, Nelson. Okay. <laughs> like in Roy Nelson's body. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I thought this was a really good match. I liked how Seth did the thing to just get disqualified because he's like, I've had enough. And then KO is like, yeah, no, we're not done. This is no DQ match now. Get your ass back down here. <laughs> and, you know, then he made that sick bump off the, the WrestleMania sign. Yep. Yep. So. I don't know if you heard. He he wanted to take a bump off the pirate ship in Raymond James Stadium. I did not hear. So his his whole thing with Seth was like, I'm going to elbow you off of the pirate ship. I would have loved to see that, like 100%. I mean, when uh, I, I don't remember at what point I messaged you when I was like, oh, my God, King, he's dead. Um, <laughs> like, that would have been everybody's response to that, except for not he's dead. It's like, oh, my God, they're dead. They're both dead. Like, that's like a 40-foot drop. <laughs> it was it was a great bump. Um, I, I thought that's how the match was going to end. It wasn't. It no, didn't, that's um, why it was great, too. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, dude, you hit it so right on the head when you pick these wrestlers that Kevin Owens is like, Kevin Owens is like the fat dad that just wants to scrap with everybody. Right. Like I love the shit out of this guy. He, he, like he's at his kid's soccer game and he's like, yeah, punching exactly. he's punching at other team's dad in the mouth for, for yelling at the ref, yelling at the like, ref, yeah. goal, ref. <laughs> um, you know that like that that's who Kevin Owens is. Kevin Owens is, and he's got the blessing to use the stunner, which is and huge. Is there not a perfect wrestler to use it other than Kevin Owens? Because I don't think anybody no. else. Could. And I will say, I think Kevin executes it better than Stone Cold ever did. I'm I I'm not gonna say. It yet. I'm saying I'm, the way he executes the actual move. I think right. Stone Cold pulled it out like at the right time better than owens does but the like actually like the kick and the drop and and you know everything i don't think anybody does it better well and we got to talk about the stunner in this match right because uh, seth rollins did such a heel move here and did not sell for owens which Mm -hmm. made it even better he hit that stunner and all rollins did was drop to the ground right no sell no the rock double flip over the right right like just literally stunner ground pin one two three did not sell didn't need to sell no like that that's a good heel i see i think that's a good sell doing it that way though like well yeah i I think i think the the clown antics that the rock would pull with the sunners was ridiculous (laughs) but at the time it worked right Right. like it was a different time but again like you look back to brett like that's the way brett sold the stunner yeah exactly and 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 so I, i i felt like I just felt like watching these two. It was like a th- throwback to like days of yore in wrestling where like you just had two solid workers in there who were going out to to steal the show. And I feel like to me, this was the match of the night. Um, Yeah, as, as, as far as actual matches go. Yeah, I would say that this is the match of the night as well. Again, I'll say it. Seth Rollins is such a good heel. I think his he, he should work most of his career as a heel. 
Oh, you know, yeah. Going, he should go- never, ever be a face again. It's like he should be the yeah. anti-Cena. Like, no face yes. turn for him. Just heal. Yep. You'll sell more uh, merch. He will. Dude, this Monday might, might, uh, Monday Night Messiah thing that he's got going on is, like, listen, I don't like a lot about what's going on in WWE right now, mm-hmm. but they got something special with that and Buddy Murphy, and it sucks so hard that one of the guys in AOP got injured because I yeah. don't think they're going to use them in the stable anymore. Yeah, so they need to replace them, obviously. But um, yeah. Or, like, you know, have – I think Razor is the one who who got hurt. Have the other one um, come out. And, you know, there's a big dude in the back that they can use, I'm sure. Heck, Apollo yeah. Crews just got moved over to Raw. Um, hey. He had a great match with Aleister Black on Raw. A great match. You texted me like, oh, my God, they're going to bury him. And I was way far ahead of you. And I was like, <laughs> sucker. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, throw Apollo Crews in there. Uh, like, you know, like I said to you, I think he came up to the main roster about two years too early. Um, he did not smile and do that whole like, hey, oh, shucks, guys. Uh, he didn't. Like nope. gimmick last night. He's got the beard. He's he's got that heel look going on. Throw him in with with the with the uh, the messiahs, um, and, and like you know the church of Seth, and, and see where that goes. I, I think yeah. you know again like like you said, this is a good gimmick for him. Um, I just wish he was a little better talker. I think he's a good talker when he's a heel. Yeah, like when he has to pander to the crowd, it's cringeworthy. And, I, I and, think sometimes he just stumbles a lot with what he says. Like, like, yeah. like what he says is good. It's how he says it that I have issues yeah. with from time to time. Because he has a little bit of a lisp. Um, and it's like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. Did you stutter as a kid, Seth? Like, I feel it. I stuttered, too. So, you know. Um, but, no, I, I'm giving this one a four and a half out of five. I'm going to join you right there with that four and a half out of five. This was a great match for sure. All right. So now we have the. Uh, do you watch um Wrestle Talk on on YouTube or anything? The the, I, the two British guys. I well, three don't British guys now. listen or watch anything wrestling related, uh, be, except for wrestling because okay. I just I can't I just can't do it. Sure. So those guys they call the the SmackDown title the Blue Universal title because it's <laughs> blue. Um. So I've adopted that. Uh, I, this is a one out of five. I, I the only reason I don't give it a zero again is because these guys showed up during coronavirus to wrestle. Um, there were four moves. I hate Goldberg, and I think Braun Strowman is a transitional champion at best. And as soon as they start having crowd shows again, uh, and Roman feels it's safe to you know be out in public, they're they're taking that title off him immediately. Thank God. Um, that I mean, that's my opinion. I don't, I don't know if that's what's going to happen. But I mean, but. one, I think Roman is finally has the crowd, and I've never been one of these people that hates Roman Reigns. Do I think he's the most talented guy in the world? No, but the guy is good on a microphone and uh, would be a great heel. But he seems to have the crowd now, given the belt, while people want to cheer him. Yeah. Um, having said that, I, hmm, I, oh, this is hard because. I don't hate Goldberg, but I have a lot of hard times respecting Goldberg because of all the stories about him hurting people and Bret Hart recently going on Stone Cold show and talking about how he's the worst worker he he ever worked with. He's dangerous. Um, he's really yeah, dangerous. He's dangerous. Like, he makes he Ryback killed, look safe. Yeah, he could have killed Taker. Like he legitimately yeah. could have killed Taker at uh, whatever they call the stupid Saudi shows. He could have killed um, Bret Hart. Yeah, he exactly. Like, and, yep. and I'll, I'll never forgive him for that kick to Bret Hart's head. Um, you know, I'm a Jericho guy. I hated the way he treated Jericho in WCW. Um, yeah. I'm a Matt Riddle guy <laughs> through and through. <laughs> I hate the fact Uh-oh. that he has zero sense of humor about Matt Riddle. Yeah. It's like, dude, get over your fucking self and, like, have fun with the fact that you get paid to put on shorts, tiny little shorts, and black pads and be a knockoff stone cold and go out and get paid millions of dollars to work for three minutes. Yeah. Like, and get over it. It's hard. It's hard because my other issue is, is I can't stand Braun Strowman either. I've never nope. liked Braun Strowman. I think he is the most generic of generic big guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, he 
He can't work on the mic. I hate that stupid thing he does when he runs around the goddamn ring and shoulder charges people. Like, yep. get over yourself, dude. Yep. Um, I, you said I can't give a zero, but I'm not even going to give this a star. I'm giving it half a star. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to call this a one out of five for both of us, just because, like, I, you know, they they did they did actually show up. This is their participation award. Could um, they have not done some other big guy moves though? Could they not left the ring and like gone up the ramp and done some shit? Like I know Goldberg can't work that well. So, I know Braun's got like five moves in his arsenal, but like Goldberg did three spears, Braun did four running yeah. power slams. That was it. There were no other moves in the match. Yep. Like there wasn't even a tie up. It was just Goldberg came out and, and speared him. And, I, and like he did that. And I was like, oh, my God, they just buried Braun Strowman. Um, but the I reason actually would have preferred Goldberg keeping the belt, if we're being completely honest. So this was Goldberg's last date in the contract that he had signed, um, which is why they gave the Brock to uh, the Brock gave the belt to Braun. <laughs> gave the Brock to Braun. They gave the Brock to Braun. Um, <laughs> but this is why they put the belt on him. And, you know, I mean, you can't you can't get mad at Roman Reigns for pulling out. You can't, you know, oh, no. um, do the, screw anybody who is talking shit on Roman Reigns for pulling out of this. So I'm a cancer survivor. I get it. Oh, like, cool. and, sorry, rant rant over. Yeah. Like you don't know people's shit. So, um, you know, so Roman's brother, Matt Rosie um, was married and had kids with a girl I went to high school with. So Matt lived in Cincinnati for a while. Matt annoyed. Um, he had this amazing Korean re- uh, Caribbean restaurant, uh, Korean uh, Caribbean restaurant here in town uh, before he died. And so, you know, I have a soft spot for Roman. Uh, I don't necessarily like I think Roman's come a long way in the last two years. Um, but I, I don't think I'm ready for an extended Roman Reigns championship run. Yeah, uh, I almost just uh, with everything that he's been through, I almost feel like he deserves it. He though. absolutely like, does deserve it, but like, yeah, I, I don't want to see him hold the belt for like a year. Um, I would no, like. To, I, I agree with that. I would like to see him come back, take the belt off of Braun, and then have him and Daniel work a program and bring back the eco warrior Daniel Bryan, um, so we can get that wooden belt back again. <laughs> I love that thing, dude. It was like for sale. I don't know if it's still for sale on the site, but I keep wanting I to go buy. I, I like. I want. Like, I've never wanted to buy a title more than I want to buy that one. Yeah, but then I look at it. And I'm like, I think I could make that. <laughs> <laughs> you probably could. So I just need to get a Dremel. <laughs> you gotta can, get a Dremel. You gotta go to a hippie store and buy some yeah. blue and yeah, turquoise just, gems. Just get some hemp and yeah, good to go. Uh, all right. So the main event of the evening was the Boneyard match, which I'm 100% convinced that AJ forgot what a graveyard was or because he's from the South and they call graveyards Boneyards. Uh, He said Boneyard, so they just decided to run with it. Um, I hated this. And I absolutely loved it. And I understand why you loved it. I think cinematically it was really cool. I I hated it for a couple reasons. One, this was the ultimate deletion match without the lake. Um, and without Vanguard one and Vince did not understand that when they did the ultimate deletion match, Michael Cole came out and said, this is really weird. I'm not sure you're going to like it before they aired it. And then all of a sudden now they're doing, you know, compound matches, uh, <laughs> that yeah. are, are, are filmed and, and whatnot. And, and while nobody does production production better than the WWE crew when they have time to put something together, nobody does a better job than they do. And, and so I give kudos to, to the, the production and, and editing and, and crew for, for putting together something that looked beautiful. Yeah. But burying AJ styles the way they did like, and not, not literally like I know they literally buried him, but like dude, undertaker needs to be passing the torch at some point. Cause he needs to go the fuck away. Because, like, much like Goldberg is going to hurt somebody, Undertaker is going to hurt somebody. And I saw a lot of people on Twitter talking about how, like, oh, this gives Undertaker five or ten more years if he can do matches like that. No, this is a one-time thing because they do it again and it will not work. See, I'm going to I'm gonna disagree with you there because I'm, I'm not saying it's going to give him – I'm not going to say it's going to yeah. give him five, five or ten more years. Not at all. But 
there is still a potential for a Sting Undertaker match, and this is the only way to do it, right? Like, this is the only possible way to make that happen. But can Sting um, go? Can Sting actually go? They don't need to go. This is purely filming a movie. They don't I, I get it, go. but like, but his neck is jacked up. Can he? Can he actually like take any kind of a bump, regardless if it's a cinematic bump or not? Uh, get a stunt double. You gotta think. You gotta think the way the way Seth hurt him. He hurt him yeah. bad, and, yeah. and and that's why he can't wrestle. And the last thing I want to see is Undertaker kill Sting. No, you have a good point. Um, because I, I just. Want- yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say because Mark um, is it, not, it was Mark Calaire, right? He is he is not as strong as he used to be. I mean, he was he was a freak of nature back in the day. I mean, he was the phenom. I've never been a fan, but he was definitely the phenom. Um, but yeah, he just he he does not have the strength to do some of that stuff, and he was lucky, lucky to get paired with AJ Styles, who will go down as one of the top ten wrestlers of all time in history. So the only reason I ever watched TNA was because of AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. Mm-hmm. So I'm right on board with you there. Oh, uh, if you don't be, mind, be I, honest, you watched because of Velvet Sky and the other one. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't, <laughs> I don't know any of the women. No, like I don't know any of the women's division in TNA. Like I hated TNA. I literally like. Yeah. I would if I wanted that crap, I'd watch WWE. Like I don't even know who Velvet Sky is. So like, their their the- their women's division was actually like solid. It's kind of like what the women's division is now. Like they actually wrestled and yeah. shit. Like, right. but no, I'm I'm kidding. No, AJ the the whole X division thing there. Samoa Joe the X division. Um, I liked uh what's his name the Blueprint Matt. It wasn't Matt Murdock. Um, no, I know who you're talking about though. Yeah. The yeah. big dude. I liked him. I liked him when he was in WWE and whatever his name was in WWE before he went yeah. to TNA. But uh. But yeah, so sorry to mean to interrupt. No, it's okay. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm I'm, I'm going to talk about this match for a minute because sure. uh, when I think it was either WWE 2K18 or 2K19 came out, uh, I I was doing you know the year universe mode and I was getting to WrestleMania season and I needed Undertaker in a match and AJ Styles was didn't have a match yet and you know I'd been building him in another story and I always loved this idea of the phenom versus the phenomenal one, like phenomenal versus phenom. Like it just worked, right? Mm-hmm. Ended up in a video game having a five-star match. <laughs> AJ Styles beats Undertaker in like the most crazy of crazy matches. Both end up getting busted open. I'm like, God damn, do I want to see this match in real life? Now, obviously we didn't get a wrestling match, right? Right. We got a movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad we did because Otherwise, I think they could have probably made it work. AJ's a veteran. Taker's a veteran. Take uh, AJ's small, so Taker probably would have been able to, you know, do some more Taker-like stuff. But having them do it in this format worked so well because, again, this wasn't Dead Man Undertaker. This was American Badass Undertaker. This was almost not even the Undertaker, like you keep calling him. This was almost Mark. This was Mark. This was Mark Calloway. This wasn't the Undertaker. It was Mark. Like when his when they did the laser lights of his like symbol there, (laughs) they should have just done MC on there. Um, Right. So it's like, yeah. I mean, he was Um, like other than when when AJ put him in the grave. And then he popped up behind him. That was really the only Undertaker-y thing that he did. But what I really liked about it was that it worked because, I, for lack of a better term, and I'm sorry if it's insulting, I don't think it is. I think they would almost agree with it. Like, these two guys are rednecks. Like, oh, right? yeah, they're hillbillies. But, yeah, I think they would both, like, gladly admit that they're rednecks. So having them do this fight, like, it's not a wrestling match, having them do this fight in a graveyard and, you know, having the OC there, like, I don't know, man, I loved everything about this and having the druids come out and i think someone on on a group i'm in compared it to like take or taking them out like a kung fu movie and i was yeah. like yeah it was awesome like i loved that yeah i mean i get it it's just I, I just like i said it's just the undertaker doesn't do anything for me and and aj is again i think one of the top 10 all time like across any brand, not just WWE. We're talking like New Japan, New Japan. We're talking WCW. We're talking NWA. We're talking like old school WWF. We're talking, you know, just anyone who's ever like laced up a pair of boots and thrown on tights. AJ is, you know, let, let's be honest, he's probably top five. One hundred percent agree with you. And I hate, I, I just hated, I, I hated them. I, I hate the Undertaker refusing to pass the torch to anybody. But he did. 
To who? He passed it to Roman. He passed it to Brock. He did not pass it to Brock. I you you okay, cannot uh, you cannot convince me that Brock did not go into business for himself there and just be like you know what fuck you, and because they had like that that time when Undertaker like uh, you know got in his face after the one W or one UFC match. You know those guys oh, didn't oh, like yeah. each other. Like yeah. I I will to this day like defend the conspiracy theory that that Brock went into business for himself. And, yeah. you know, at that point, like he had the loss kind of losing to Roman was was not passing the torch. Having said that, I don't think that AJ needed to have the torch passed to him. I think in a way this is patching, passing the torch to him. Undertake, this doesn't do anything for Undertaker. This gives AJ time to take to take some time off because he's had some nagging mm-hmm. injury and then come back probably on, a, I'm going to say, non-OC like come back as a face again and do and listen you got to remember aj's not young anymore either he's probably got a couple more years left he's my age yeah like do something really amazing i think this match does everything for aj okay i i i see i i can i can get your point i just i don't know i always like when aj wins so (laughs) i don't disagree with you there i love aj winning except when shinsuke lost to him yeah and that was too much because they just kept punching each other in the dick so yeah. <laughs> how many low blows <laughs> in a storyline it was like Stephen a smith practicing boxing um, <laughs> if you guys don't get that google Stephen a smith boxing <laughs> 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 what kind of trainer teaches a dick punch <laughs> anyway all right so i'm assuming you're giving this a five out of five i am going no i so here's the thing I don't think that you can give this a rating. Like, and I don't mean like these guys didn't come to work. This wasn't a match. You can't rate it in that typical like five star match rating system. So okay. I'm just, so I'm how many how many that- stars out of four as a cinematic experience do you give this? Four. Four. Okay. Yeah. Uh I give it three. So Okay. Um, because I like I said, the the, the production crew does an amazing amazing job so um they i was actually shocked at how good it looked yeah i i think i think you give a wwe production crew a week and they can do anything that they want and make it look beautiful yep all right um night two ding 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 it starts off on a really low note (laughs) <laughs> to say the least the, the the pre uh the pre-show match with Liv Morgan and Natalia uh Liv defeats Natalia which I was really shocked that Natty gets no love um I think well, Natty's they gave Liv the win yeah and, I'm and shocked her up. um I, I think Natty's best days are behind her and I'm I'm waiting for her to transition into like a backstage producer coach role at, at some point soon um yeah She's never getting a run with the title. She's not. Neither she's nope. not gonna get either of the titles. Um she's not you know, Beth Phoenix is not a full time wrestler. They're not gonna, you know, throw the tag team uh belts on the two of them. I if she was gonna have a title again, like that would have been it, right? Yeah, and, and they they had that opportunity and they, they didn't pull that trigger. So um as much as I love Natty, I think it's it's kind of time for her to wind down. Yeah. Um, I don't think Liv Morgan's a very good wrestler. Well, she's not a good wrestler, right? Like she's 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 good at making some great facial expressions. She she can work a crowd. Uh, I think she's young, mm-hmm. and I think that she has an absolute great chance to to build up on that and become a good wrestler. Um, you know, and I think they are trying to turn her into a star. Whether it ends up working or not, I guess you know we'll see. So she I just think, lost Oscar. So yeah, I think if you look at, Car- but she gave Oscar a match. She did give Oscar a match. That's so, true. I think if you look at like Carmella and the way they handled Carmella, because Carmella was not a wrestler. She was like on the um, what was it? Eve Marie? What was oh. the the lady with the red hair? Eva? Eve? Oh, Eva! Just it was just Eve, right? Yeah, or whatever. Uh, no, yeah. Eve. Eve was like this super sexy like latina girl with the, the yeah no i know i know yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was like i think it was like eva marie or whatever but like you know everybody hated her uh they hated her in nxt so they bumped her up to wwe and they hated her even more um you know but like carmella kind of started out that way where like she was not a good worker and like she's actually turned into like a pretty competent upper mid card female wrestler carmella and, yeah 
Yeah, one hundred percent. And and you know, I mean, she's had the belt. Like, I don't think she'll ever get the belt again. But um, I think if Liv, they they take that approach with Liv and take their time with her, like they did with Carmella, there's something. Um, but Carmella had the luck, I think, in quotes, of working with Enzo and Cass as like the third wheel of of that shit show. Um where she was able to be down at the PC and like hone her craft and everything. And and I think Liv being out on the road working yeah. night in, night out is is not gonna help her get to where she needs to be. Um I also think like they repackaged her really weirdly. It is a weird repackage, right? Like I I, I think it, it almost works. I think they need to do something else with it. And I and, and I will say this. Out of the three wrestlers who were in the Riot Squad, and man, was that a, an epic failure. That could have been such a good group, and they did nothing with it. Um, she has the most potential, even, I think, out of Ruby Riot. Uh, Sarah Logan's going to end up being a, a, a Saturday night main event, you know, yeah. ball ward for the rest of her career, unfortunately. And she can go. That's the sad thing. She can go. She can I, actually go. If they were smart, they would pair her pair her with her husband and, and pair her with Viking Raiders yeah. and do something like that and have them feud with, like, Bianca yeah. and... Oh, uh, and the Street the Profits. Street That'd be great. I mean, because she already wears, like, the squirrel pelts and everything. And, exactly. You know. It's like we should be writing the shows or something. Maybe. I don't know. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. I've only, been, I've only been watching and going to wrestling for, like, 35 years. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so, I think I told you. I don't know if I ever told you. Like, I got to watch Andre the Giant wrestle Hillbilly Jim. You did. I, like, that's, that's the, so awesome. The, the greatest match. Like, it wasn't even a good match, but it was still the greatest match I ever saw because it was Andre yeah. in person. And that's, and, um, and I got to tell you, that's the reason I love Undertaker. It's because, like, I was going to house shows, you know, at Madison Square Garden when I was a kid because I yeah. grew up in New York, you know? So, like, I, that's just like, these are the people that I grew up sure. with. Sure. I get it. No, I get it. I get it. Um, So, one out of, one out of, one out of five. For, and especially being a pre-show match, yeah. yeah, one five. Cool. All right, so then we get into the main card, and it opens up with uh, champion Rhea Ripley losing by submission of all things to Charlotte Flair. Now, you you sent me the article about her and her visa situation. I I uh, I still I, I I I have so many things to say. About I, do, this. I don't. But one, I don't buy that. Um. To Charlotte Flair is <laughs> the new John Cena. Um, I I really liked her in NXT, and I really liked her when she first came up. There is no reason this is her eleventh or twelfth title reign that she's had in the company. Um, and I know they're trying to get her to that like seventeen and pass it up to eighteen to beat her dad, but Ric Flair's seventeen titles came over the span of like 30 years and there were multiple times where he held that belt for multiple years not just you know three months and drop it two weeks and drop it three months and drop it um i do not understand their fascination with charlotte flair she's not a draw she does because not... her last name's flair well and i, that and is I get that like I, I understand that but like she's not a draw people tune out when she's on she she's not going to do anything for NXT against AEW. The fact that Vince McMahon thought that taking the NXT title off of what is quite possibly who is quite possibly the hottest thing going for NXT right now in Rhea Ripley, who's twenty two years old, mind exactly, you. and gets like almost as big as a pop as Becky's getting right now, right? Yeah. And thinking that Charlotte Flair is going to be the one that wins the Wednesday Night War against AEW because she's the NXT champion, I'm not going to watch NXT. I'm not saying I'm not going to watch NXT, but I'm not going to watch segments that she's on. She brings nothing to the show. Mm-hmm. No. She's already been there. You it's don't, the you, same thing with her over and over and Like over. Finn Balor going down there makes sense, yeah. right? Like Finn Balor didn't do anything on the main roster. You well, know? He wasn't allowed to do anything on the main roster. Well, yeah, he, but, yeah, exactly. But, like, okay, so if they want to win this Wednesday Night War, you know what they have to do? Is they need to take a page out of AEW's books and put on kick-ass matches and not talk so much. There's just... I mean, if you remember when NXT was just an hour long and it was pre-taped and, you know, th- that was the best wrestling in the world happening at in that the world. time. In the in world. In the world. Or let me, let me... 
<laughs> um, <laughs> so that was the EST of wrestling, right? It was right. the greatest, the fastest, the brutalist. Um, I don't think brutalist is a word. <laughs> I like it though. I but dig uh, it. that would be a good tag team name, the brutalists. The brutalizer, maybe the brutalizers. I no, no, you got to do the brutalists. The brutalists. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and NXT Brutus, going to two hours was the worst thing that ever happened. Wor- to show. And going live is the worst thing that happened because they watered it down. Um, yeah. No more were they allowed to like slide through the corner um, under the bottom rope in in between the ring and the ring post, which you had guys who used that to to just amazing moves. No more are they working the apron of the ring. Um, yeah. No more are they, you know, just doing that kind of New Japan, like, quick pin, like, near fall. Um, you know, I don't know. Like, my greatest fear is Johnny Gargano goes up to the main roster. and, and he, he never a, should go up to the main roster. My, my second greatest fear is Tommaso Ciampa goes up to the main roster. Because um, they're both small. Vince hates small guys. Um, you know, but with this match, one... Rhea Ripley came out dressed like a Power Ranger. Um, I told you everything totally against her character. Yeah, like she, there were no chains. She wasn't wearing the black. She didn't have the leather jacket on. She was overly sexualized with like they kind of like you know, uh, miracle broad. Her 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 top her was top. Like, like, yeah, yeah, it was horrible. It's like what are you doing? That's like not Rhea Ripley. Like, like yeah, she was totally oversexualized. It, it didn't, like when like, they did that, I knew they were gonna yeah. lose. I knew I knew they were gonna give the belt to 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 Becky or to to Charlotte when I saw her. Um, because Charlotte has had so much work done, she doesn't even look like the same person who started with the oh. company. Um, she doesn't even like the same look like the same person from a year ago. Yeah. Like I get getting the mole taken off her face, right? But like she right. did not need a facelift. She did not need to get like bigger boobs than what she already had. Like, and it's not to say that she's not like you know beautiful and sexy. Let's like you know let's not like argue that with that. But right, right. it's just too much. But like. I mean, I think Rhea's great. Like, her programs with Tony Storm over in NXT UK were the only reason I watched NXT UK. The same thing. The only reason I watched NXT UK, their matches were fantastic. And this match wasn't good. I see so many people saying that, like, oh, this was a four-star match. No, and this was a two-star match. crap out of each other. Like, so. this match could have happened on an episode of NXT. Like, if you're going to put Charlotte on a bar and you're going to have her win a championship, mm-hmm. then you have to put her on that bar. Yeah. This was no in no shape or what, form, whatever. Sorry, I screwed up, you know, how you say that. But this was in no way the match she had at, with Asuka at WrestleMania or even the matches she had with Asuka on SmackDown. Like, this was just a match. Yeah, this wasn't the stuff that she had with Becky leading up to last year's WrestleMania. Yeah. Like, this is just, like, you know... Um, her winning the Royal Rumble was a travesty. Her getting this, like, they just want to put every accolade on her as quickly as they can. Nothing she does is earned at this point. And then and she's it makes me feed into, into, yeah. So, yeah. um, when she goes away, like, she was gone for like three months. Uh, I didn't miss her. I was never you sitting around it. like, hey, where's Charlotte? Nope. Not once did I did I think that. And and then Corey yeah. Graves had to say on his podcast that he didn't like what they were doing with her, and then yeah. she started getting pushed again. I, I will say this with all of this like pre-taped shows and stuff like that i don't miss Corey graves uh like it wasn't until he kind of showed up on the balcony during like pre-show stuff or like in between stuff it's like oh you're still with the company <laughs> tom phillips is one of the most underrated announcers yep. in the entire business Co- Corey Corey graves can go fuck off to like backstage or something or just yeah. keep doing your podcast his podcast is great i hate i, like I hate him as a as an announcer yeah. um he he's like all the bad things that Jerry Lawler does without the uh, sexual harassment, annoying voice. Well, yeah, that too. But yeah, without the sexual harassment, <laughs> so, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking this is like a one or a two out of five. It's a two. Okay. Yeah, it's a two. Just because there were some moments, like some yeah. moments. So and so, this started the night off, and I was like, oh, really? Like this is how you're starting the second night of WrestleMania? Um, for me, what was like two down matches coming out of the uh, <laughs> the first yeah. night, uh, yeah. and then they follow it up with Alistair ba- Black and Bobby Lashley with Lana, which made zero sense for them. And all of a sudden, Bobby Lashley's wearing pants. Well, good. 
<laughs> I, I so I prefer when wrestlers have that look with the long pants. Um, yeah. You know, I think it's more modern. I think it just looks cooler. I think they can show more of their personality and in, in yeah. their costume choices. Um, I've never been a Bobby Bobby Lashley fan. Me neither. Um, I sure. like Lana. I, I I miss Rusev Day with her. I don't and, like Lana at all either. Well, I miss her with Alex English and and Rusev and in that dynamic. I thought that was a really great little thruple they had there. Um. But Bobby Bobby Lashley again is one of these guys I just I don't get like he can't talk he can't wrestle Lana is all of a sudden missing her Russian accent they jobbed and cucked Rusev out for some odd reason again um, again <laughs> yeah again exactly uh, I love Alistair Black I think that guy's got a ton of upside I I think he's got a like a CM Punk esque way about him in the ring where every match is different there's no rhyme or rhythm to his move set um other than like he's got a killer finisher that's different from everybody else's because i think there's too many things that are like stunnery rkoe aa or you know fu uh f5 type of finishers that everybody's doing lately and and just the you know just the spinny roundhouse kick thing is awesome Black Mass is the best finisher in wrestling right now, period. Um, Alistair Black, and I'm sure I'm not the first. I Wait, won't be the last Wait, even better person. than the Judas elbow? <laughs> I don't know if you're being sarcastic or not. Oh, I'm being 100% sarcastic. That's okay. a bullshit move right, that Chris... I'm just, I'm just that, making sure. That is just a bullshit um, move that Jericho is like, guess what? I'm just going to make my finisher a spinning back elbow, and oh people are going to cheer for it. <laughs> Because yep. it's me. Anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No, it's you. okay. Uh, yeah. One, and I, and I, like I was going to say, I don't think I'm going to be the last person to say this. I'm definitely not the first. They need to make Aleister Black the new Undertaker. And I don't mean like a carbon copy of the Undertaker. Like you can't do that. But this dude needs to be unbeatable. He needs yeah. to be feared. People need to be scared of him. Like he has so much presence. His moveset is not a wrestling moveset. It is a UFC moveset. Mm-hmm. Watching him kick people in the face is some of the most like entertainment I get during the week. His running knee, black mass, and that's actually the biggest thing that killed me about this match, right? So Aleister Black beats Bobby Lashley, thank God, because if right. Lashley beat him, it would have been a travesty. But then, like, the black mass looked good at the angle they showed it for the pin, right? Mm-hmm. And then, man, going back to being a pre-recorded show, they showed the replay. And he clearly doesn't kick him in the face. Right. And obviously, he never kicks them in the face, well, right. but they, they angle it really well. They showed the they showed the goddamn replay. So, and I'm like, what are you doing? I think moving the hard camera the way they have to to face the ramp um, has really messed with the WWE style of filming, and that's why we're noticing more of these weird little botches. Um, you know, Alexis thing was a botch. That was just a flat out botch, just a straight up botch. botch um, yeah. But we, we, we are seeing now um, just these these people who who are are normally like oh wow that was awesome and we're kind of seeing how the how the sausage is made and yeah we're like eh, uh. so we we definitely desperately need crowds back so they can go back to their normal way of, of shooting matches yeah um I I will say if Bobby Lashley would have won after the pre show and the Charlotte Rhea match. I would have just turned this off. I would have rage yeah. quit uh, WrestleMania 36, fired up the PlayStation, and played some NBA, NBA 2K20. Um, I liked this. I actually didn't have a problem with this match. I, no, I, I I'm just saying Bobby would have won. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, I, yeah. But, no, this was this was a good match. I think this was a solid 2.5 out of 5. Yeah, I, I would go 2.5 as well. It wasn't perfect, but giving Black the win at WrestleMania is, I think, big. And, and that starts again, his streak. Yes. Ex- oh, thank you. Yes, exactly. So Ooh. you you want to go Undertaker? So I, I think you make a really good point about like he should be the modern day Undertaker, but do not put a belt on him. Yeah. Do not put a belt on yeah. him for five years. Let yeah, him agreed. just tear through the roster, and people fear him. And when he wrestles champions, it's in non title matches on Raw or SmackDown, um, whichever brand he's on, and he decimates them. Just yep decimates and like you leave those champions coming out wondering like holy crap i i don't want to do anything 
that involves this guy because I know I'm going to lose my belt. Um, if Triple H can get more control over Mondays and Fridays yeah. and like pick the people he wants to pick, and I, I think Vince, to be fair, sees something in, in him too, which is why he got a match at Mania. Yeah. But like, if he can, well, get I think some it's more Paul than... Heyman who sees. Yeah, okay. it. Paul Heyman, Heyman is the is the real Alistair Black advocate. And thank um, God he's there too, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, but Pauly needs to be reined in as well. I mean, he can't just <laughs> you can't just let him go either. Um, no, we'd call him it would be. Oh, yeah, I don't know. So anyway, uh, <laughs> all right. So then we got. Uh, Otis defeating Dolph Ziggler in what was a short, albeit fun-ish match that had Mandy Rose coming down in maybe one third of an outfit. Um, one third of an outfit, yeah. So, but I mean, at, to be fair, Otis most, was wearing one third of an outfit too. Well, well, Otis wears a child's small shirt, <laughs> so um, yeah. Uh, it was nice to see Otis go over. Um, I, I I fell off the Dolph. Ziggler train a few years ago like I, I used to mark out hard for this guy and and now I'm kind of like okay Nikki just go you do your stand up you're, you're much better off like I, I can't imagine WWE pays you enough to to be the uh, the litmus test right I, I did like his program when he was with Drew and his program with yeah. Seth I yeah. think that was good Um, that's about it since he's been back yeah but uh I don't know. I, it was a it was a funnish match. Uh, I'm really hoping they use Sonya Deville for something to showcase her actual talents. Yes. Uh, I think they kept her in the shadow of Mandy Rose. Uh, yeah, because Vince loves blondes with big boobs. Well, like that, and that you know the, the Corey Graves, like you know, you know, I, I said he wasn't like the king with the he was like the king without the sexual harassment. But you know, I forgot about Mandy Rose. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's. That's borderline creepy. Like it's so damn creepy and yeah. so stalkerish. Right. Uh, oh, I don't. While he's having like an affair a- with Carmella, you know, <laughs> the whole time yeah. too. It's like, uh, dude, are you, are you trying to get with Mandy Rose at the same Ma- Mandy Sachs at the same time? Um, yeah, no, but I really want Sonya Deville to come out of this and like get a real singles push and like let us see what she can do. Cause she can talk. Um, I love her hair up and square up thing. I think that's yeah. just a great little way to come out. And, and, and you know, she's an MMA, uh, yep. MMA woman. And, you know, I, like, let's give her a chance. Um, was she the glitch? Was she the the thing from, from SmackDown? I, I missed SmackDown on Friday night. But oh, I know, you mean the, I know. Uh, the, like the, the secret text? Yeah. Group? Yeah, she was. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, which is fine, you know. Uh the, the kiss with Otis and Mandy Rose was really uncomfortable. I just, um, like I need to see that. He pe- just- well, she went in for the peck, and he tried to slip her the tongue. Um, <laughs> so it was like, yo, simmer down, big boy. She's not a ham. Oh, um, <laughs> so, but I, you know, I give this one a two and a half out of five. I, I thought it, it was it was a fun match. I think the right person went over. Um, hopefully, this is the end of it. I'm going to give it a two because I just don't care about All the story. Right. I'll agree with yeah. you. I'll go two. I'll drop that half. Um, okay. Now we had uh, the longest match of WrestleMania. Um, 36 minutes. And it felt like the longest match of WrestleMania for a couple reasons. Uh, we had the last man standing match, Edge defeating Randy Orton. Um, I do not care for last man standing matches. Um the only I, I've only liked a few throughout the years. The one I really liked was when it was John Cena and Bray Wyatt and Bray wouldn't sell for anything that Cena was oh, doing. Yes. And so he yeah. threw him in the cabinet and shut the cabinet on the ground face down like he was in a portalette and he was playing a prank on him. I thought that was like a great ending if you're going to have Cena win. Um, but yeah, the, like these two went all over the performance center. This was this was 100 percent a commercial for the performance center. Um, don't pretend that this was a last man standing match. Um, but when they're fighting on that truck and it had like the bed cover, I was waiting for one of them to throw the other one in and close the truck. Yeah. That's how Um, I was like, I wanted to see that. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, I'm so torn about this match because goddamn, I love these two. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially to Randy. Randy's a legend straight up legend yeah. is going to be in very quickly in the hall of fame whenever he retires. And that's still a long ways away. Uh, 
and obviously I I'm I'm marking hard for Edge oh, because yeah. he's back. Yeah, he's back. Uh, and just anytime I hear you think you know me, I just lose my shit. Well, I um, told you that was my ringtone on my phone ring- for a really yeah. long time, and then I switched it to my alarm. Um, and my wife made me change the alarm <laughs> because it would go. You think you know me? <laughs> and like it would scare the shit out of her every morning. Yeah, but um, like I want. <laughs> I wanted to love this match, and I couldn't because of its length. It was just – it was so damn long. Well, I'll tell you the other reason I couldn't is because the bumps Edge was taking, and, like, I know he's selling it, and I know he's, like, he's like shaking his hands out and, like, kicking his legs, and it's like – I, I can't I can't watch you do this. I can't I just can't. Like You're just um, nervous about his neck. I, I absolutely was. And yeah. and because of the way he went out, and again, he's a guy who had to leave the business for nine years. He had to vacate yeah. his title. He had to go through two major neck surgeries. Um you know, I, I just I, No, I, no, I listen, had a hard I'm, time with it. Yeah. I'm I'm with you there a hundred percent. Um I'm not not at the same level because of the amount of doctors he went and saw. Right. But that's how I am right now with Tommaso Ciampa. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, he came back so quick from that neck surgery. Right. Like, so quick. So anytime... Dude, he goes... He his One of his first matches back is War Games. And the yeah. When he took it, Adam like, Cole off the top of the cage through two tables, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was, God. Oh, my God. He's dead, King. He's dead. He killed himself. <laughs> Anytime um, he landed on his back and neck, yeah. I just I was like, that's it. It's yeah. it's done. Yeah. He's broken his neck again. Well, in uh what what's um Cole's finisher, the knee to the back of the head there. I oh, what the, the last shot. Last shot, right? Like he took like two or three last shots over the course of, of two two takeovers and a whole bunch of NXT wrestling matches. And it's like, dude, you are either the toughest person that ever existed or or the dumbest motherfucker to walk the face yeah. of the earth. To, Not to mention to the Panama that. Sunrise. Is it the Panama Sunrise? Oh yeah, I forgot about the Panama Sunrise too. <laughs> um, you know the the. But yeah, I, I just I I just had a hard time with this match, and then the concerto at the end, which you know no one is allowed to do anymore for very good reason because it's a total unprotected headshot. Um, but it's not. Well, it's but it's not, not, but the thing is, is it's reverberating the chair that your head is on, which okay, is not enough. good for your head either. No, I, I will, um, I will concede to that so for sure. That and that's where, like, I, I'm saying, like, it is a unprotected headshot because one, that's not good for your inner ear. Two, that's not like you can still get a concussion from the reverberation right. that's coming no, back through good that point. chair. Um, and and when Randy is like, like, um, uh, in the Rock when the uh the air conditioner fell on Dr. Cox there. And, yeah. uh, you know, he's like the legs are, ki- or it wasn't Dr. Cox. It was just one of the unnamed, I know, yeah. guys. but you know, the legs kid in Nick cage is like, is that normal? And like, he's like, yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, you know, getting, getting that level of, of quote unquote reality. Like I didn't need that in this match. I, I needed no. this to be a 20 minute, the two of them kind of chasing each other around for a while, some brutality, maybe a a bunch of stuff, and then like I'd be perfectly fine if neither one of them came up to the bell. I would agree with that. And uh this was, I think, out of any match out of the two nights that needed a crowd the most, uh, this was it. I disagree uh, because they really? would have been going back into the into the Deaths no, of Raymond James Stadium anyway. Like but they still would have been piping in the crowd. You yeah, know what I mean? That you know, maybe if they like let, let let's go and like recut this and pipe in some crowd noise and see if that changes it. Um <laughs> Yeah. Um but yeah, I don't know. I like I liked this match and at the same time I was terrified watching this match. And and so it, it definitely affected the enjoyment. I think it went on too long. I told you it was a slog um when when we were watching it. Uh because I wasn't going to watch night two right away. I was just going right. to wait and kind of watch it because, you know, it was Westworld night. Um, but I ended up watching pretty much the yep. whole thing. Um, I, I fell asleep right before Brock and uh, Drew started oh, wrestling. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I woke up like an hour later and, and went back and watched that match, which I was like, oh, <laughs> I came back for this. Um <laughs> Of course, then I watched I will, Westworld. I will say but. I love the finish of this match. The finish was great. I, on I, top yeah, of the it was on top of the 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 production, the NXT production truck w- was really good, but it it needed to be nineteen minutes shorter. 
19 minutes shorter, but I, I do love Edge crying at the end oh, yeah. and like hugging Randy. Like, so I here, thought that was... here's what I want coming out of this rated RKO. You think you protect Edge by putting him in a tag team with Randy Orton and you bring mm-hmm. rated RKO back and you, you, I know Edge is going to be a face no matter what, but you bring them back as a heel stable and you have them run roughshod over the SmackDown tag team division and you put the belts on them at SummerSlam. Oh, I I don't know, man. I, I just... These two versus New Day? Come on. Like, no. That, this, this, no. Yes, this is great. They can, they can finally rid the WWE, the scourge that is the unicorn stampede. <laughs> um, you know. um, I, I want to see Edge work with Seth. I really do. Yeah, but he's not... I don't think he's going to go to Raw. He's going to be a SmackDown guy. SmackDown was his show. Yeah, that's like true. I stopped watching SmackDown when he retired for like a year, yeah. because I just couldn't. Like, I, he he belongs on on the blue brand, um, <laughs> you know, brand loyalty, man. Yeah, and I just think, yeah, I I think he belongs on the Friday night show. I think Fox wants him on the Friday night show. Um, I think it will help bring ratings on, yeah, for on sure. to SmackDown when and and especially once fans come back, because. He's gonna. He's on a on a victory lap that's gonna last five years. Everywhere he goes, he's gonna get a pop. When they go to Toronto for the first time on SmackDown, it is gonna be insane. It's gonna break TV speakers. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm gonna have to mute it um, to make sure that I, I don't like lose my speakers. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I I think this is a three out of five. I agree. Three out of five. All right, so moving along, then we got um, – we kind of talked about this. Well, we were ta- – I don't think we talked about this on air. This We were talking about this beforehand. Uh, the champion Street Profits uh, versus Angel Garza and Austin Theory with Zelina Vega for the Raw yep. Tag Team Championship. Um, this might have been the match of the night for, for night two, uh, but not for the match itself. Exactly. Okay. For, yep. For the extracurriculars that happened, um, we had uh, Bianca Belair make her her wrestle. She had her WrestleMania moment. Let's just put it she that did. way. Yep. Um, I love the Street Profits. The way they they work. The way they talk. Um, the the only thing I don't really like is the like let's smoke or I, I forget what the little catchphrase is about. Uh, we want the smoke. Yeah, we want the smoke. It's like that's just stupid. I mean, it's just it doesn't make any sense. Um. But I think Angela Dawkins and Montez Ford are great. I love them in NXT. I'm happy they're being used. I'm happy they're champions. Um, the Angel Garza. It was supposed to be. Was it? It was supposed to be Andrade, right? Um, it was supposed to be Andrade and Angel Garza, and he and Andrade hurt himself again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Charlotte's got to take it easy on him, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> she just keeps humping the life out of him. Uh, <laughs> That's rude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Charlotte. I'm sorry, Andre. Day. Um, but Austin Theory is a is a beast. Like you know, like if you're gonna replace him with someone, um, that's great. And I think Zelina Vega like building up like a stable of of wrestlers and not having them all be Mexican is is good for her. Um, she is like the everything that Miss Elizabeth was. She's that plus she can go. Um. Which is nice. I love the fact that she can wrestle and that she's not just a manager, right? right? Like she she is the total package and she's got she's got great charisma. I think there's a reason they picked her not all that well, unfortunately, but they picked her to play AJ Lee mm-hmm. in the Fighting with My Family movie. Uh, you know, she's really good at what she does yeah. and is also the the perfect kind of enemy for Bel Air to oh, come yeah. and debut against. Like I said at the beginning of the show, like this being my moment, like mm-hmm what better moment than like for her to make her have her WrestleMania moment against Selena Vega. Like I loved everything about it. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a great match. Like it it just really was. And then, you know, with the two of them going at it there at the end and, you know, Bianca getting over on her and yeah, I I think again, we're going to, we're going to see this particular group of, of individuals like, or teams, these two teams, uh, going at it, we're going to see some Bianca versus Selena Vega one-on-one matches. We're going to see, you know, 
Montez or Angelo fighting Angel or Austin. Yeah. Um, you know, then when Andrade comes back, you can put him into this mix and, you know, maybe you, you throw someone else in, like maybe throw like, like a fish out of water, like Chad Gable or something in with the street profits. Well, um, yeah. And like, God forbid WWE have long tag team feuds again. Right. right? Like, well, they've just, I hate like I like tag team wrestling was always like some of my favorite wrestling. Um, yeah, you know the Rockers, the Heart Foundation, Demolition, um, you know Rated RKO, just moving moving up through through the years and and things like that. The Hardys, um, I always like the Dudleys. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, you're right. They need to do like some really good long form. Um, you know, I mean they do it a little with the New Day and the Usos, but. Again, that's just because they're part of that rock family tree, and yeah, they. But look at look at why AEW is so successful right now. Because it's all about tag team wrestling. Tag team wrestling is so freaking good, and like, there's, you know, they don't show them every week, but there are some long-standing feuds going on there. You got Lucha Bros just about going and feuding with every tag team, and them all just hating Lucha Bros. Right, uh, but you're supposed to hate Lucha Bros. Now. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, so like, and those guys know, are crazy. I love them, but. Um, no, I think you get like the, the best wrestling is not singles matches. The best wrestling is tag team matches because you get four guys out there doing their best. And like, you know, if someone needs a break, they get, they, you know, they, they make that hot tag and like all of a sudden the action kicks back up again. Yeah. It's not Bobby Lashley rest holds for five minutes. (laughs) Yeah. So. Um, I, I'm I'm giving this one a four out of five. I'm giving it a four and a half out of five because Ooh. it was, it, yeah, it was my moment of the night. Like Bianca Belair having her moment. Like right. she is, I said it, I'll say it again. She has everything she needs to succeed and is one of my favorite things in wrestling right now. Okay. Um, and then moving on to the women's five pack challenge or fatal five way as they called it. Um, you have Bailey defending against Lacey Evans, bleh, Naomi, Sasha Banks, and the Mina. Nobody Mina than Tamina, right? Um, she just looks like she's coked up like every single time. She, she comes looks to like her. she's melting. Like her makeup yes. was awful. Um, it's like she's an android, and she's yeah. It's just she's uh, she's a synth. She's something. <laughs> she like, she was the Gollum, and they put her. She's like she's like she's like the female Lars Sullivan. Oh like, yeah, yeah I know. I know. Ugh. I hate Lars yeah. Sullivan. He's exactly okay. Both completely useless and <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. The only yeah. reason she was here is because she lives close to the performance center. Um, I one hundred percent believe that. Like, if you watch who's like wrestling on Raw Monday night, it's just the <laughs> NXT people who live within like a block or two of the performance center. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, one, I'm really glad Bailey retained. I think it did a good job in forwarding along the Bailey Sasha story. Yes. My biggest fear is they're gonna bring Sasha back to being a face, um, and that they're gonna make Bailey a face again. Like I really hope they have the balls to go double heel, um, feud, which they haven't ben done in a long time. Double heel feuds, huh? Hates them. Oh, I know he ben, does, but yeah, like. Y- they're like, I can't think of a better female heel than Sasha Banks. Oh, she's freaking brilliant. Like, do like, you remember when, when in NXT with Becky, when she, she's, she, like, I, I fully give that program with Sasha credit for kind of inventing the man. Um, yeah. Because she was like, you know, you're not, you're not angry enough. You're, you don't have any fire. Yeah. And that's when Becky was coming out in like the leprechaun outfit. Um, Oh, God. And then it transformed her where she came out in like, you know, the the black kind of one yeah. one piece with the leggings and everything that is is close to what she wears now. Um but yeah, I I really was hoping to see the two of them at the end. But at the same time, I liked it when Lacey Evans landed the the big show punch on Women's Race. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not calling it that. I know. Um, when she landed the punch on Sasha and then Bailey sat there and watched her get pinned. But then Sasha came back in to make the save. Um, yep. But then when Bailey was, and, and this was again, WWE production. This was great because they put the shadow over Sasha. 
that made Damn her it, look you know what I was gonna really, talk really, <laughs> really, really menacing in a good way. Um, and and this is a feud that people want. This is a feud that I'm really happy that they had the foresight and and uh, reserve to save for when they have a crowd. WWE doesn't do a lot of things right these days, but one of the things they do well when they do it, because they barely do it anymore, is long form storytelling. And the fact that this, you know, you know that this is setting up their match at SummerSlam. Right? Like, there's nothing else that this could possibly be setting up. Right. Having Sasha walk backwards into that shadow and have Bailey be in the white with the belt was like some of it, it blew my mind because I'm like, oh wow, they actually made this work without Sasha winning the title right now. And Bailey being a heel right now, like I love this whole like I, I know that she's got the eye of Ra or the eye of Horus as a tattoo, and she's kind of been coming out with like the Egyptian headdress every now on that like i would like to see more of that like this heel Ooh, like a little cleopatra thing going on yeah right? exactly. like look yeah, not like, like you know um exactly like i want them to take it that one step further and yeah. have her like go even more heel yeah um, i love her talking I love shit i love the way she talks trash the whole time i like when she yells at michael cole um, she's like no we didn't yeah she, like had the balls to yell that i yeah. love that um so yeah i don't know i i i gave the i i gave this one a four out of five yeah, I'm gonna give it a four just simply because of those last like ten minutes, right? With with the the pin on Sasha yeah. and then Sasha giving the assist. Well, like, and I, I think you got got to go back to before Naomi was eliminated and when it was the three of them in the ring and they were going and and just they were putting on a really good match because there were a couple times where Naomi got over on them when they tried to double team her. Yeah, and you know, uh, I think. I think Naomi, like, she's come a long way from being a Funkadactyl, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. But I think she's going to be, like, when we look back at, at this time in women's wrestling, she's going to be a missed opportunity. Um, missed opportunity and, and a, util a utility role more than anything. And I think, you know, they're always like, oh, she's the most talented athlete on the roster. She's not. Bullshit. Um and and I, I think giving her that moniker was a is a, a disservice because fans expect to see something out of her that that she just can't do. Um, when when you say things like that, like it's like okay, like her big move is you know jumping up and giving people like a running stink face essentially. Yeah. Um, which is great, and the way she does it, and the way she does the the little herky with her legs getting all up and and you know parallel, um, is cool, and she does some cool stuff. But she is all style and no substance in the ring, which is a problem. Yeah. So. Yep. All right. Cool. Um. Now we had the acid trip portion of the evening. <laughs> I feel really bad for anybody who is on drugs during this. Match. Oh my it god! Wasn't really a match, right? It's like David after dentist. Is this real life? <laughs> is this even real? Um. So. I, I Angel had asked me, my wife, my wife's name is Angel, uh, had asked, like, so how, how was it, you know, Monday morning? I said, well, the Firefly ha Funhouse was either the worst thing I've ever seen or the best thing I've ever seen. Um, and I've never dropped acid, but now I know what it feels like. <laughs> um, it was the most demented version of John Cena, This Is Your Life, um, that we're ever going to get. It was a really interesting look at, his the highlights of his career but under the lens of these were all the mistakes that he made yeah um i love bray as like the the mr rogers bray i i'm not a big yes. fan of the fiend um but i love the mr rogers bray right uh <laughs> so seeing that uh, the nwo thing i i literally lost it I was laughing so hard at how great I never that. in a million years would have seen that coming. No. And the whole thing of that is that was that missed heel term when they had the uh, fear my name thing for Cena um, where he was going to where he was going to turn heel. And, you know, they were the when Hogan had turned heel at 42 um, that that WCW had the wherewithal to to yeah. do that. I, I think, you know, Cena, unfortunately, and I'm never going to bash John Cena. I think he he's done an amazing thing for this world, not just wrestling. Um, 
became so popular with kids, there was no way they were ever going to be able to turn him heel. How much money do you think over the past 20 years or so has he brought to the WWE? Uh, like billions. It's got to be billions. Billions. Easy. Easy. But like, let, let's like let's not look at it from a money standpoint. He's the number one Make-A-Wish. Yes, which is amazing. And, and you know, I mean, like, if I were dying and I got to make a wish, I'd probably be like, hey, I, I just want to meet John Cena and sit down and have a conversation with him. Yeah. Like, maybe we can wrestle. <laughs> um, I just want to give him a five knuckle shuffle. <laughs> is, that, is that so wrong? <laughs> um, but, you know, the 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 little what really got me too was the little 80s vignette, the the eat your prayers and take your vitamins and, you know, him lifting the weights to the point where he couldn't move his arms was really funny and his face was like what is even happening what i i'm not i don't want to do this um i I think this was this was not wrestling this was art exactly it was it was a different version of what they did with the boneyard match and do do you know what i immediately thought of when his arm stopped working like it was scary for a minute it reminded me of like one of the dream sequences from one of the early nightmare on elm street films oh yeah right like they did that so well where his arms wouldn't work and he was trying to punch Bray, and it was brilliant like oh. it was just so well done hey i want to take an aside real quick um the edge randy orton match there was one thing that really bothered me um and i forgot to mention and i just want to I, I don't want to forget um and jumping back to Nightmare on Elm Street kind of threw it off. When Randy tried to hang him in the weight room. Oh yeah. That was a them. that was a really, really bad take, WWE. Especially after the the dark side of the ring Benoit stuff just aired and that's kind of back in everybody's mind. Um that was not cool. It was poorly timed. It was poorly done. It didn't need to be done. Uh, I don't think I have as much of a reaction either way as other people do, but I understand why there is a reaction. Yeah, I mean, I was a, I was a Benoit guy before, <laughs> before like he went crazy and killed his family. Um, yeah. So you know, and and you know, just you know, the the less we say about this, the better. But like that exactly. was not a cool move. Okay, back to the the Firefly Firefly Funhouse. Um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to derail you there. No, no, I thought I think it's important to bring up. I think yeah, yeah. Um, no, I I I loved all the little vignettes. I, I the prototype John Cena with the ruthless aggression, and then missing the, the slap fist again. Do, yeah, this SmackDown fist was. I wonder where they got. That. I wonder where that is. Like, is that is that up in in uh. Stanford is it in a warehouse in Florida like where is that fist and why can't they bring that back on Smackdown it's with the uh, it's with the Ark of the Covenant (laughs) nice um yeah I don't know I I thought this was good and then the ending was really cool too but it again is very reminiscent of broken Matt Hardy yeah I mean they have to give Matt credit right like Matt's the whole reason that these things can even work in wrestling right now um but I, from what I understand, Matt was completely flattered by yeah. the fact that they were able to do these and do them well. So um, I, I always liked Matt better than Jeff. Um, always. I, I think he's the better wrestler. I think when it comes to wrestling minds, we're never going to see someone like Matt Hardy ever again. It, it, you, you, you have the talk right now about being able to reinvent themselves multiple times. Mm-hmm. And the two people that have done that the most in the past 20 or so years are Chris Jericho and Matt Hardy. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? Um, I, I do like to joke about Matt Hardy that he takes the tiniest little steps ever. Um, yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> he does. have a very long stride. Um, yeah. so anytime I see someone who like takes like short little steps, I'm like, Oh, there must be a Matt Hardy fan. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, this was really, really cool. This could have gone really bad. Um, I think because John Cena is such a good sport. I, I think, I, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I imagine he and 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 Bray have a pretty good relationship. Oh, to make that work, absolutely. Um, because I can't like, like, like you go and you look at Goldberg and Braun, right? Goldberg, or let, never mind. Let's look at Goldberg and Matt Riddle. Goldberg doesn't have a sense of humor about anything, so he's not he's not amused by Matt Riddle just tweeting about like, oh, this is like riding his skateboard, and he's like, it's dangerous, but not as dangerous as a jackhammer, um, you know, which is hilarious. Um, but John going out and like, this very well could be his retirement if he never yeah. comes back. 
I'm okay with that. Like, I think I, this yeah. goes out on like such a cool note and such a different note. And, um, the, my only concern is like, he never passed the torch to the new face that runs the place. Yeah. At, uh, at the same time, I don't know if he needs to. Well, I don't think you know? we need to do that now anyway. You no. know, I, I, I think well, it's such a different world and, and, and wrestling yeah, is such a different exactly. business, but, uh, but yeah, I'm not going to lie. I would not mind seeing a like final, like this is it. Cena versus the fiend at SummerSlam in some kind of crazy stipulation match. I want to uh, see Cena get one more championship run to tie flair. I flair. Yeah. Just to tie. I, I, I don't want him to beat flair. I would like to see him get like, you know, maybe, maybe a three month run with the belt, um, losing at the Royal rumble. And, and maybe that's how he goes out. Um, or he yeah. wins, he comes back and wins a Royal rumble and he goes out like maybe he wins it at elimination chamber and then drops it at WrestleMania and yeah. that's it. Um, yeah. but yeah, like he needs his, I'm sorry moment. I love you. <laughs> I agree. I agree completely. I, I want to see more of him. Uh, if he, again, I'm with you though. If we don't see him again, this fly, firefly fun house was just ridiculous and fun in so many ways. So I, I'm giving this like, so our, our, our cinematic score, like with the the boneyard match, I'm giving this a four out of four. Yeah, I'm. I, I loved both equally for completely different reasons. Four. All right, and then the final match of WrestleMania 36 lasted four minutes, uh, and there were six moves. I'm. I. <laughs> I, I'm not speechless often. Um, it's, it's a disrespect to Drew McIntyre. It's a disrespect to the company. It's a disrespect to passing the torch with the WWE Championship. Uh, it's a disrespectful way to drop the belt. Uh, it's it's screwed up that they didn't protect Drew the way they protected Shayna, in my opinion. Uh, you know, Drew still took the risk and volunteered. They say this it was voluntary to wrestle at WrestleMania. Right. He took the risk. He's got a family to wrestle. I think he could have lost to Brock to, you know, protect him Mm -hmm. and then beat him in front of a crowd and win the WWE championship. This is just, I think like for such an awesome competitor and such a great entertainer to win the belt in this way was heartbreaking. Yeah. It's rough. Um, And especially the little thing they filmed afterwards that they showed on raw uh, with, with big show coming out. Which, you know what? That was a much better match, but that's some yeah. bullshit right there. That is some fucking bullshit right there. And I want to know if it was Brock or if it was Vince who had the idea of not having these two giants kick the living shit out of each other for 20 minutes. I'm getting because- it. I, so I don't know. I don't know what kind of... So, like, you never know what you're getting with Brock anymore. Like, you know, you get Brock versus Finn Balor... That was a good match. It's a great match. You get Brock versus Daniel Bryan. It's a great match. Uh, Brock no sells Dean Ambrose. Brock no sells and squashes Ricochet after he said, "I really want to work with this guy." Or Ricochet. Um, yeah, I know that that killed his career. Yep, absolutely, one hundred percent. Like he'll never be. He'll he will never ever recover from that. Nope. Um, like uh, Joe Exotic says, he will never financially <laughs> recover from that. <laughs> Oh my god! What a segue, <laughs> Jesus! That was amazing. Boom. Oh. Hey, I've been doing this for a while. I know how to segue <laughs> into shit, um, <laughs> and I watch a lot of stuff. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so I I just think uh, I, I got to give this a one, one out of five, and it kills me. It kills. Yeah, me. man. I I think it was such a disservice to, um to drew i think i think vince mcmahon needs to leave the company i think the board i mean he's being investigated Mm -hmm. i know that i think the board needs to oust him uh i don't know what that does to his relationship with his son-in-law because i don't know i don't know if paul levesque is the answer either i i think he's dude i give him credit and i give him the benefit of the doubt with nxt alone yeah uh you know, I think you have him and you keep Paulie and you do something really good. Uh, it, 
I have to give this match a half again because yeah. it wasn't a match. Yeah. And it, it uh, like, okay, Braun Strowman and Goldberg, two big dudes. They're neither one are like terribly important. No, you know, yeah. uh, so it's almost forgivable. This isn't. Drew is a superstar. He is one of the biggest. You know, I would I wouldn't say money makers. But he's, you know, one of the top guys on the roster right now. He's one of the he, top guys in the world because when he yes. had his first run with WWE, he was pushed down everybody's throat as the next big thing, and he didn't deliver, and he ended up in 3MB and then yep. fucked right off out of WWE. Yep. And he went and said, you know what? I am going to rededicate myself to my craft. I'm going to hit the indie circuit. I'm going to go dominate an impact for a while. And I'm going to work my way back into it. And then when he came back into the WWE fold, he didn't come right back to the main roster. He had so little ego that he went back to NXT and crushed it. Oh, he was so good at NXT, dude. He was so good. And he wasn't there very long. No, he like, wasn't. But still, he went down. He's like, you know, I got to relearn the WWE way. Um, you know, he didn't ever have to come back to WWE. And, and, and people would have loved him. And And... To do him like this and the fact that he's the first, which just shocked me that he's the first English born champion. I was shocked to learn that as well. Like, like the first English shocked. born, first Scottish WWE champion. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. But like, then I go uh, back and I think, like, British Bulldog was never WWE champion. William Roddy Piper. Regal was never. Oh, but Roddy Piper was American. <laughs> he yeah. wasn't actually real. Right. Yeah. But, but William Regal was never WWE champion, which I always think has been a travesty. Um, you know, and, and you you think of like the great like British wrestlers that they've had over the years, and and the fact that none of them have ever won the main a main title. Yep. <sighs> it's okay. Just sad. The, the biggest thing is I could say is that at least he has the belt. Yeah, he has know? the belt. He has the little side uh side badges. His on side there plates too. are nice. Yep. His side plates um, are cool. I love his new logo. Um, but yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to say about it is my only problem with him having the belt is I have absolutely no idea what you do with babyface Drew McIntyre right now. Um, you have him go on a feel good run of victories until you can figure out how to get Kevin Owens back as a heel and into a program with him. Oh, see, I would reverse that. I would keep KO as the heel. Ooh. I mean, as the face. Okay. And I would have Drew turn again because uh, Drew again is a much better heel. Yeah, you're his. right. Okay, I'm on board with that. Yeah. So, but I think KO, like, being his, like, SummerSlam match could be something special. Really good. Um, yeah. Or his Survivor Series match. And you let it slow burn. Maybe they, they team up at SummerSlam. And then, you know, over the course of the next month, they turn on each other and KO goes back to, you know, that popcorn eating, <laughs> you know, just like just badass heel that he can be. Yeah. All right. So what are you, what are you giving this? Oh, I gave it a half. Oh, yeah. one and a half. No, a half. Oh, just a half. All right. Well, I'm I'm yep. giving it a one because I refuse to give anything less than a one, um, for, because they it did has nothing to do with their they, their work. They, they, they like did show up work. and yeah, yeah. No, they it, they showed up and and they did what they were told to do. Um, let me let me put it this way: I'm not giving the match a half star, right? I'm giving Vince McMahon yeah. and maybe Brock Lesnar a half star. Let me put it that way. I'm ready for Brock, Brock Lesnar to just be done with WWE. Like, I've never had a problem with him, but if he's going to come no. work, he needs to come work. Yeah, I'm like I said, I'm just ready for him to to kind of be over it and like, all right, I'm good. I've wrestled enough. Um, I've got millions upon millions of dollars. I'm gonna go back into isolation, hang out with Sable, um, and just enjoy my life. Yeah, because he doesn't enjoy wrestling. He doesn't enjoy the crowds. He doesn't enjoy any of it. He just likes the money. And yep. I think with UFC buying this island so they can keep doing live shows, <laughs> one is just the biggest flex you could ever make and I love. But two, Brock can go back and do that. He can fly to their private island. He can fight. He doesn't have to see anybody, and he can leave. Because guess what? UFC does not need a crowd. Nope, they don't. Not one bit. So, uh, and, I, and I swear I heard you just call it UFC. I think you meant Mortal Kombat, right? <laughs> Is this the Earth Realm <laughs> finally yes, defending exactly. itself from the rest of the, the plane of existence? 
Get over here. Oh, man. Your soul is mine. Mine. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right, my friend. We're at the end of a marathon. It was a marathon, man. This, this has been fun. a lot of fun. Thank you for, for like, <laughs> for entertaining this and <laughs> um, putting up with this idea that I had to do this. I, I so. loved it. I, I had so much fun. Um, but uh, yeah, man, this was a blast. Uh, I wish WrestleMania would have been better. I wish it would have been pro- postponed. To be honest, I wish it was postponed, and I I really wish that they had had the balls not to call it WrestleMania and just ca- like call it a different name. I'm just put WrestleMania in quotes and just yeah. like go from there. Just be yeah. mad about it. It's like in quotes and in italics. <laughs> Something I it's, don't know. It's sarcastic. It's WrestleMania going up at the end with the question that's what they should do just wrestlemania question mark 36 (laughs) it's wrestlemania 36 (laughs) wrestlemania in parentheses light (laughs) demo (laughs) this is the demo 100 calories this is the demo wrestlemania you play in target on the switch (laughs) exactly so all right where where can everybody find you in the everything is permitted podcast online uh you can find us at everything is permitted.com we have all our shows there and our blogs you can also find us on literally anywhere uh podcasts are found and on facebook twitter and instagram at permitted pod awesome thank you um and again guys this is the infamous podcast thank you for listening um you can back our Patreon at patreon.com slash infamous podcast. And where you add it, go back. Uh, the everything is permitted. Um, Patreon. I think there's a contest going on with you guys for the next person yeah. who follows. Yeah. We're yeah. The next person so. we're at, we're at, we're at that nine right now. We have nine patrons. We're yeah. looking for that. tenth, And if we get that 10th, that person gets a free digital movie of their choice. So Ooh, I might be your 10th patron. Um, there you go. <laughs> so, um, and you know, we're on social media at infamous podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, infamous podcast.com, um, Spotify, iTunes, Google play, anywhere podcasts are found on your favorite podcasting app. Um, if you like, the show and you like this show and you've listened all the way to the end of this congratulations thank you um go grab one of your friends phones who's into this kind of stuff pull up spotify uh follow us on spotify and then set their notifications on to get notified every sunday when we have new episodes um so yeah julian thank you again for coming on this has been a really fun time and thank you Yeah. All right. So whenever you're listening to this, have a happy day, night, evening, weekend, whatever it is. And we'll talk to you soon. Later.